Welcome to Lemons.com and our lab video series in Cisco ACS. You can find complete list of ACS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. First, just want to point out that LDAP integration is not only for a non-active directory environment, but in situation where you need to access two separate active directory domains that do not trust each other. Since ACS is of version 5.4 does not support multi-domain integration, LDAP integration might be your next best option. In this video, we will go through a process of integrating our Cisco ACS with LDAP directory. Here's our lab setup. We have a Cisco ACS version 5.4, the IPF.100 and the VLAN32, and we're going to be using a Windows 2008 Active Directory domain controller as our LDAP server, and that's the, the IPF.40. So first we need to make sure that there's a user account that ACS can use to access the LDAP server. And back in the AD or Active Directory integration video, we have already created a dedicated user or AD users for this purpose. And we call it ACS underscore AD, which we will again use for this lab. And it's by default a member of the main user. Just keep in mind that depending on your environment, you might need to have a higher privilege, such as the admin privilege for this to work. Now let's log into our ACS server. Then we're going to go under user identity stores and then external identity stores. And then we'll click on LDAP. And we'll click create to create a new LDAP connection. For the name, we'll give it LM underscore LDAP. And you can see right here, there's an enable password change. If you want to have that enabled, make sure you check that box. Let's check that too. Then we'll go next. For our host name, this is where you provide where there's a host name or IP address of your LDAP server. For us, it's 172.16.32.40. We're using the LDAP default port, which is 389. And instead of anonymous access, we're going to use authenticated access. And this is the account or user account that we have created on the Active Directory. And make sure you type it in full, including the domain name. So for us, it's lab minutes backslash ACSAD. Otherwise, it may not work. Then for password, press with Cisco. And if you want to support secure authentication, then you would check this box right here and then specify the root CA that you want to use to verify the secure connection. Okay, then you can also adjust the server timeout as well as the maximum admin connections. Then we can go ahead and test our server and you can see. We can bind successfully. Then we can click next. Here, this is where you specify your search base for a user group lookup. So for the subject search base or the user, we're going to enter the domain level, which is the lab minutes, and then DC equal com. We're going to do the exact same thing for the group search base. So we're not specifying any specific OU. And we can test the configuration. I can see right here. The ACS are able to see 16 subjects, but for the group is zero. And this is because when you integrate or when you use the Active Directory as your LDAP server, you need to make sure this group object class is group. And again, it's depend on what kind of LDAP server you're using. So you have to make sure that those object class name matches what you have for the AD. You have to change this to group. And then if you test the configuration one more time, you can see the ACS now has the visibility to the groups as well, which is 44 and OK. And if you want to do any kind of prefix suffix stripping, you can check these boxes here as well. And then you have to specify the separated that you want to use as part of your username format. And then click finish. Now if you go back in and then if you go under the directory group, this is where you'll be able to select certain user groups from the active directory and download it the ACS or ACS can use that as part of the policy later on. So click select, and here you can just sort through the list. But if you happens to have a huge number of user group, you might be able to use the search filter to kind of narrow it down, as we're going to do here. So search filter, you can see everything starts out with a CNs equal. So we do CN equal domain, because we're going to look up a domain computers and domain user groups. Click OK, and right here, we should be able to locate domain computer, as well as the domain user. And it will click OK. And if you also want to reference certain directory attributes on the LDAP server, you can also add it right here as well. But for us, we're going to leave that alone and then we go submit. So at this point, if you only want to use the LDAP server as your user database, then you can just start using it right now. But if you want to use a multiple 
user database, for example, is to use the out app as your primary database and then local user as a backup, then what you need to do is to create the identity store sequences. So you'll click under identity store sequences. You can see we have one created back in our Active Directory integration video already. So we're going to create one more for our LDAP as well. So for the name, we're going to call it LDAP local. That means we're going to check LDAP first and then we're going to fall back to local if the user is not found in the LDAP server. And it's going to be password based. So make sure we check that. And then we'll select our LM LDAP for our first option and then internal user and internal host in that particular order. Now, if you want to use your external identity stores as part of your attribute retrieval for the authorization process, you can also select them here as well. We're not going to do that. So click Submit. Okay, again, just to show you how you would utilize the identity store sequence, we're going to go under the access policy, and this is part of the authentication policies. And this is where you can specify which user database or identity source you want to use for the authentication. So we're going to use one that comes by default with the ACS without having to create a new one. And then right here, when you click on identity, we have identity source. And then you can select whichever, whether it's just the outapt or if you want to do multiple identity store sequence, you can just select the one that we just created as well with the outapt underscore local. So that wraps up our video on ACS 5.4, our DAP integration and identity source sequences. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmiss.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.